We're excited to play uh, Missouri State. Uh, last time Arkansas was relevant, relevant was when Coach Petrino was here, and we're very grateful for for his time here and what he did for the program. You know, we've used that in recruiting, and without him and his staff, um, we wouldn't have been able to do that. So um, it'll be exciting for him, I'm sure, to come back here. But um, they've got a good team, ranked seventh in their uh, in the F, um, FCS and or FBS. And uh, which one is it? FCS. FCS. I don't even know what we are. But um, they're ranked seventh and have a good team and went to the playoffs last year. So almost beat Oklahoma State last year, uh, beginning of the year. And Oklahoma State beat Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl. So we know that uh, we have to be ready for, for a fine team that's coming in here. Coach, after watching the film, is there any specific players or uh, things stand out about the South Carolina game? Well, I think the, the number one thing is our penalties. You know, we've, we've got to figure out how to get those cleaned up. I mean, most of those, if not all, the, the penalties on defense happened on third down, and they were all five for five for 15, you know, 75 yards. And, and – uh, I mean, it just can't happen, and we've got to really emphasize it. We've got good coaches. They'll they'll help with that, and, and we've got to get it fixed because it's going to come back and bite us if we don't. Um, I felt like, obviously, I was asked after the game about Drew Sanders' play, and I, I thought he had a good game. I didn't know he had a, you know, a hell of a game. I just I thought he was had a really good game, but he did some things that, that were – Pretty incredible. Um, I thought we played well in special teams. You know, the problem there is, is uh, minus the two penalties. You know, we have a live kick and, uh, you know, we get penalties. So we've got to become a more disciplined team. The offensive line played real well, I thought, controlled the ball game. And uh, that was kind of what I saw. Sometimes with, uh, when you're playing an FCS team, it's kind of viewed as a, a cupcake, whatever. But you've got a really good team, as you mentioned, mm. Missouri State and Bobby Petrino. Does that make it a little bit easier to get the guys' attention? Like, hey, this is a really good team we're playing? Probably. You know, I really haven't thought of it that way. Uh, probably. Um, you know, these weeks are about trying to get better, trying to find, you know, uh, see – uh, who can help us win ball games? Um, so they're just really these kind of weeks. Like last week, we kind of took the approach: we have to get better ourselves, and we certainly have enough things to work on that we have to get better before we worry about who we're playing. So I think we've got a team that I've been proud of our team ever since we've been here with them putting the game before away and playing the next game. So I I feel pretty confident we'll, we'll get them focused. They'll be focused and ready to play. Sam, you know, Missouri State, uh, people probably think of them more as a basketball school. They were pretty down when Bobby went there, and he got them in the playoffs the last two years. Looks like they're going to be in the playoffs again. What have you thought about the job Bob, Bobby's done, done there building that program up? Well, I mean, he's a great coach. I mean, he was when he was here and went to the Falcons and Louisville and I mean, um, that was – they tried several different people, you know, before him. And he's he's been able to go in there and, and get them back to the playoffs and get them to the playoffs. And, and uh, you know, he's just a really good coach. you got a good staff and you know, went into transfer portal and, and got a lot of players there. And I'm sure they – they went there because of his reputation as a coach, and and uh, so it's been really a a great job that he's done there, and I'm sure we'll continue to do. The running game, I know some of that's just lining, you know, the offensive line just dominating, but you know, you're getting the the running game, getting the ball to receivers in different ways. Yeah, I think Malik uh, Hornsby was in the backfield. Um, what do you thought about the running game and maybe all the different variations that, that Kendall's done? And how, yeah. <clears throat> how, how key has that been to your all success these first two games? Well, I think it's I think Kendall's 
called some – I think he's called two really good games. Uh, I thought he had uh, South Carolina a little bit on edge with some of the things he was doing, some of the plays we were running, uh, the personnel that he was using. Uh, I think he's really had – They've had great game plans over their own offense, and and uh, um, we're using you know uh, Malik carried the ball a couple times, and and we have three three backs. Hopefully, we can get Dominique Johnson back this week. Uh, again, that's kind of be be up to him. He's cleared, so uh, be kind of up to him. But uh, our offensive line is playing well. That includes Trey Knox and Nathan Bax. You know, in there, our wideouts are blocking well on the outside. So, um, but Kendall's really, really, really using the personnel that we have with the short throw games almost as a run, uh, if you will, and uh, really done a nice job, really calling good games. Coach, Wilmo Claire, Pure Trail Nation. Arkansas six sacks last week. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but you're averaging the third most sacks of any uh, team in college football right now. How do you see that impacting games going forward and how much – of an impact has it had so far? Well, it's had a big impact on, you know, we, we, we have to get to the court quarterback where you know, our secondary is continuing getting better, but, uh, you know, we've got to improve there. We've had a couple of injuries that hurt us um, last week. Um, but we have to get pressure on the quarterback. That's what we kind of went out to do, along with trying to get our own kids that we had on campus better. But trying to go out in the portal and find somebody that could run to rush the passer. Um, ironically, Drew Sanders is one of those guys, you know, that we can put up on the edge and rush him along with some of the other new guys. But um, it's helped us. I mean, uh, the other thing, too, we're not playing as much a three-man front, you know, as we did. We're, we're, we're not really the same defense that we were a year ago with the pressures and the man coverage and things of that nature. Um, so we're allowing ourselves a little bit more chances, a little more men to uh, go after the quarterback, and it seemed to be working uh, for us. Coach, after reviewing the tape and everything, what did you think about Kari Johnson's play? And with Slusher, I believe you said you expect him back. With him yeah. coming back, does he slide back into nickel, or do you maybe look at – since you shuffled up so much stuff? I think we're going to kind of be a, a, a rotating – position you know if you, in other words if you can play boundary safety you can probably play nickel and probably need to uh, so those would be those two positions for Kyrie um, you know uh, day day's injured uh, right now and and uh, so that's another one that we that we will not have uh, on Saturday uh, but um, I think where we're at right now we've got a multitask with with those guys, and I'd like to see Kewan Parker get some action at corner. I think he's earned it. I think he's done a nice job at practice, and he's a really good cover guy. And uh, hopefully we'll get slush back, and then that will allow us to kind of, you know, Chavis is going to have to play corner and safety, uh, which he played safety this week but or past week. Um, but we're going to need some of those guys to be able to play – a couple of positions. Just for clarification, you said Kari is going to play nickel and boundary? Well, I don't know. I, I mean, he's going to play safety. He's going to play middle safety and possibly boundary safety. He might go to nickel as well, too. It just depends on how the week kind of goes out. And you think slush back at nickel? You know, <laughs> that's a good one, man. I don't know. You know, um, he's going to have to play both. But I don't know. Um, I don't know where where we would put him to start with. I think, to be honest with you, I think um, Jaden Johnson would probably is better suited to nickel, and then that would put Slush back to safety. But I don't know. And um, Christopher Paul, uh, after his play, you ready to clear him for more action? It seemed like he was. I know in Pro Football Focus he graded out super high. Well. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> I'll have to look at those one of these days. I haven't yet. I'm 60. But let's say I did. I think I agree with them. 
I think he played really well. Um, he got more he got more reps uh, this week than he did the previous week. Uh, he's a good player, a physical guy. Uh, knows what he's doing better now than what it, he ever has. You know, uh, he's playing mistake-free football. Um, so I don't, you know, I don't know when he gets a lot of his reps is when we're in that three linebacker look with when Drew's on the field uh, as a rush, Jack, Buck, whatever you want to call him, uh, and we're we're getting a little more comfortable with that set because of the play of Pooh. So certainly could happen. I ask you about Jaden Hazelwood last week. I think when he talked to us Tuesday, he said that he's having fun playing again. Uh, are you seeing kind of that, that joy from him? You know, he played with a little bit of fire on, on Saturday too. Are you seeing kind of yeah. that joy come back? I think, yeah, I can. I think he's having a good time. He He's a physical kid. He's a man. I mean, he's a mature kid. Um, um, not afraid to say his opinion, uh, uh, which – Helps the football team, uh, not afraid to lead. Um, brings a lot of confidence to the offensive football team. I mean, he just does. He brings a lot of confidence. He's never down. Um, you know, he – I like everything about him. I think he's tough and physical, good player. But uh, I hope he's having fun because I'm having fun because he's on the team. 10 in the AP poll just what does that mean for this program at this point and and how important it is is it for you guys to celebrate that well I think it's a big deal uh, I do um, everybody always looks at the negative all the time you know and I tweeted out that we were number 10 and then I got some responses well it doesn't matter well I ain't tweeting it out to you guys or a 50 year old man I'm trying to use this recruiting you know so I really don't care what the guy says. You know what I mean? I'm trying to recruit. Not him or them. I recruit. And uh, so we're proud of it. Sure, we're proud of it. And that doesn't mean that that's where we want to stay. Or It's hard to be in the top ten. We've done it two years in a row. The kids have done it. And the coaches, the assistant coaches have done it. Yeah, I'm proud of it. Sure am. Whenever it came out, I was smiling ear to ear. Now, what that means right now, it means that we're number 10 today, and I tweeted it out. I'm, I'm proud of it. Trey Knox was banged up after the game. Is he? Is his ankle fine? Is he going to be fine for this weekend? I think we've got to watch him. I think he'll be fine this weekend. I think we really have to watch him. Um, and how we do it, if they're – there's potential for him to practice that day. In other words, if Dave hadn't said he's out, we take him into Indy and we let the coaches kind of see where they're at physically. Uh, that is also encouraging them to practice. You know, they're already suited out. They're already out there. They're in Indy. Uh, but it's also uh, a good a way to find out where they really are injury-wise and uh, so we're going to do that with him today. Um, there was another one too, had an ankle that we're, we're kind of doing the same. Who? Brainy. Yeah, Brainy. Same thing with Brainy. I think Brainy's probably a little healthier than Trey. Hey, coach, uh, Rocket leads the SEC up here. Uh, Rocket leads the SEC in rushing through the first two games. Just what have you seen as uh, the improvements in his game early on this season? Well, I think the line's playing pretty good, you know. I think that helps him. Um, he's he's making decisions faster. Uh, you know, a running back is, is you know, he, he got to find the right hole in there, and he, he's finding it faster. Um, he's attacking the line of scrimmage better than he did last year. Um, certainly running through arm tackles is something that he's doing really well. But I think he's just playing with a lot of confidence, good player, big back. Uh, but in a nutshell, he's, he's seeing holes better than what he did a year ago. Talk about Dominique working to get back. How do you go about, I guess, finding the right balance between feeding the hot hand and rocket while also getting carries for the other talented backs in your room? I don't know. I guess we had to – 
kind of wait and see when he gets back. It's a really good question, you know, because you end up having a guy like Dominique that was might have been the best back we had last year. He might have been two, you know. Regardless, he was one of the top two backs we had last year. Um, you know, you have to watch it because, you know, guys are practicing. You're not. You know, you got to get back in the flow of things. So, uh, I don't know that we would upset the apple cart a whole bunch uh, when he comes back early in the first – first time he comes back because it's it's not broke right now at the same time uh, we've got a really fine football player that we'd like to get on the field so once he becomes confident I think I'll be able to answer that question a little bit better Hey, Coach Meredith Mulkey, 4029 News. I just wanted to ask your thoughts on the dynamic between Bumper Pool and Drew Sanders and just what they bring to the defense and if you see any resemblance between them and the duo you had in Grant Morgan and Hayden Henry. Man. <laughs> I didn't memorize that question. Um, I think Bump and Drew are close. Uh, I think they're good friends. I think they've earned each other's respect. Uh, I think there's two total different personalities there. Um, Hayden and Grant. Um, probably Hayden was more of an extreme, you know, away from that. Hayden was just a uh, slobber knocker, you know. All he wanted to do is just hit people. Um, boy, I like that kid, though. Man, what a good player he was. And then, you know, Grant was, you know, Mr. Everything, you know, best talker, best coach we had. I mean, best talker, best leader. You know, he was something really special there as well. So there's really not a huge uh, similarity between those two duos. Uh, this group here um, plays really well together, uh, plays really complimentary football. Uh, they're both really good players. Drew Sanders is – a really, really good player. When Drew was going berserk in the first quarter, I looked down at the stat sheet, he had six tackles before anybody else had more than one. Yeah. Do you think South Carolina started to kind of recognize him a little more, and do you think that's going to happen maybe moving forward where teams maybe try to go away from him? Or Well, you know, the, the thing is with them both being, you know, with him being in a box, it's really hard to run away from him. I mean, I guess you could check and he'd have to run another two yards, you know, two and a half yards. And I could see they knew we were putting him up on the line of scrimmage, doing some things there differently. Um, the thing he has, he's got range and he can really run. I mean, he's really fast. Um, I don't know. I don't know if South Carolina changed anything of that or not. Uh, you know, the game was dictating a little bit how they were calling their offense because we had gotten up by 18 or whatever it was. And so I really don't know, Trey, but I I know people are going to know where he is, you know, where he's lined up. Aside from uh, Bobby Petrino's time at Arkansas, have you ever crossed paths with him at all or met him or anything? I don't believe so. Um, and I don't want to say no because if he was asked the same question, he said, yes, uh, you know, I – I don't believe so, um, but certainly know what a wonderful coach he is. I, I do know that. Coach, you're so cleaned up from week one to week two. What's your focus cleaning up wise to week three? Penalties. I mean, we had ten of them. I mean, if you're looking at the game Saturday, we had ten penalties. I mean, that number should be anywhere from two to six. Uh, they're going to call a couple of holdings. They're going to, you know, this, I, I get it, but not 10. And that's, that's on me. I mean, I've evidently let that go at practice. I, I didn't think I had, but evidently I have. And I, I, I promise you it's an emphasis, but it was last week too. And we didn't, you know, because I think we had seven the first game and, that's disappointing. I'm disappointing myself on that one. We've got to get it cleaned up. Along those same lines, the three of the illegal hands to the face, you mentioned that kind of surprised you. Going back and looking at it, was there just a technique thing? or what, what, what oh, I just rode up. I mean, they just kept riding. And, you know, on one, the South Carolina O-lineman had his he, – he was grabbing 
Atlanta Jackson's face mask, you know, so he had his face mask and he had, you know, so it was dueling face mask or whatever. Um, but it would be one thing if you had one kid with three of them or one, two, and there was three different guys. Um, so obviously uh, we're not getting close enough to them. They were all what I call long arms. So they were all long arms. And basically you've got your arm in there and you can't get two in there. And it, and it rides. Well, you can ride for a second. You you can get up in there, and take it off, and you won't get called. It's just just keep holding on. A lot of it is they they were doing the same thing, not necessarily in the face. I'm not trying to get in fine or officiating. I'm I'm good with that. But um, we've got we we got to get our hands out of there once that happened. We went back and looked at tape, and because I go look, go back and look, I cannot remember and. And we weren't doing that, so we, we're certainly emphasizing that. And Stromberg was named the uh, co-offensive lineman of the week for the yeah. SEC. Is he playing through two games, kind of how you would expect a senior center yeah, to be playing? Yeah, to be honest with you, and Ricky will tell you the same thing, I don't think he played his, you know, some of his best ball uh, against Cincinnati, and there's, you know, reasons for that, the guys you're playing, all that kind of stuff too. Uh, but I thought he had one of his better games uh, Saturday. And we challenged the offensive line that if they'd take over, the, we felt like they could take over the game. And and certainly Kendall gave them opportunity to do that. And I felt like they they basically controlled most of, if not all, the first half. Sam, I know when you went back to play at Georgia and Missouri, you hadn't been the head coach there, but you had coach there. and. Bobby's obviously coming back where he was head coach. From your perspective, what's that like going back and coaching against a place at that place that you coached? Well, I think it's different, Bob, to be honest with you. If you go back and you know the know the staff and you know the people on the staff, you know, I think it's a little bit different with me going back and knowing Kirby, there's different emotions because you know, you want to win. You want to. He, this is your friend. He, he helped you. You know, become a head coach. All the. You know what I mean. And where, coach and I don't know each other. I mean, you'd have to ask him. But I, I would think there'd be a little bit of a, of a difference just because, um, you're not going back to a university where you actually know, guys on staff. Now, coach, I'm sure knows a lot of people still here. All y'all. You know, maybe a lot of you. Not you, probably. You're probably too young, but you're not. And so uh, he should know you. And, and then, you know, Andrew Parker started at Appalachian State, and they had a huge win at A&M, mm -hmm. and he tweeted about it. And yeah. just wondering, um, how, how you, I'm not saying you guys stay in touch, but just wondering mm -hmm. how you feel about one of your former players. Yeah, good for one. him. Yeah, good for him. I'm good for App State if um, uh, for, for those kids. And I'm going to catch heck for saying that from a and I I don't – I wasn't rooting for App State, uh, but you know, good for him. He, I hope he played well. I, I haven't looked at the game yet, but good for him. Two tackles. I didn't watch. Um, and I ask one more. Um, I don't know if you and Barry have had it, Barry Odom have had a chance to talk about this yet, but what what do you think about the intricacies? You know, because Bobby's known as an offensive guru and all yeah. that. What do you think about his offensive skills and play calling and scheming and all that? Yeah, I think he's fantastic. I mean. Really good coach. Um, schematically, he knows what he wants to do. He's got a quarterback that's good. He's got a running back. I like the running back a lot. He's got two wideouts, more, but he's got a wideout. He's a really good player. Um, uses them well. A lot of different sets, different formations. Uh, can run the quarterback. Will throw it when he, you know, a bunch when he needs to. Um, they're a physical football team. I tell you one thing, he, he knows the personnel he has because he uses the best ones on his team. And a lot of times that doesn't happen. I mean, a lot of times you got a guy and he kept touched the ball three times, you know. He knows he's got a good running back, good quarterbacks, and a good wide out, a lot of good wide outs. But 19 is really good. And uh, so they use him. On Saturday, Breeny came in here after the game and said when he first got to campus, it was a little bit rocky for him. Personally, I'm just curious how you've seen him settle in since that point, and 
I guess, grown to the point where, you know, he's able to take over a role with, with Cat out? I think if you've never been, you know, because Brainy didn't have an OV, you know, so if you've never been to Arkansas or any, basically anywhere and you go in there, it may or may not be what you thought it was going to be. And I think that's where it was here. I think part of that was um, we were – we we had better players and maybe maybe what he thought we did you know what I mean there was a lot of different factors we were further away from home for him you know all kinds of different things but um, yeah I mean he he said it he he didn't really get going going he wasn't swift in getting going when he first got here but he's a mature kid a great kid and I'm glad that. Uh, he finally has gotten comfortable. Sam, I know when, when you're stopping a run like you guys did on defense the other day, you know, something's got to give. But it seemed like the middle of the field was open a lot for, for Rattler and their receivers. Was yeah. there what, – what, what, what do you think was yeah, going on? They were on with running that? some vert routes, four verts on us, and they were – it was open. And uh, uh, we've got to drive on the ball better. We, we You know, we – we can't. We got to be in position in the safety position. Uh, we got to. We can't be too deep. You know, if there's no threats in our area, we got to break on the ball. Um, we just, you know, we have to. We have to play better back there in a lot of places. But um, you're absolutely right. We had we had problems with the middle of the field, and whether it be two in the middle of the field or one. And uh, we've got to, we've got to fix that, which I'm um, certainly I uh, think we will. Thanks, coach.